Oh, there she is. Come to Daddy. Didn't remember it being as heavy as this. <laughs> First thing to do is get rid of that. That's only for use on the tripod. Now that is the camera I lived with happily for nearly 20 years. Jealously guarded in my locker. Went round the world with these several times. And in my view, the best 16mm film camera ever. Uh, there were those who would dispute that. Some people preferred the Arri version of, of a self-blimp camera, but this was just, it was just built to be used. It's, it's, it's ergonomically superb. You can just do anything you like with this camera. You can put it on a tripod and uh, add all sorts of bits on it, extension viewfinders, all sorts of stuff, and do you know, high-level high drama. But basically it came into its own when it was doing a lot of, uh, of handheld, what they now call fly-on-the-wall, documentary style of stuff, because you could handle it so easily. A typical way of doing an interview would be... Come over here. Oh. <laughs> How's that? If we're, if we're doing a flexible interview, um, which Here we often go. did, sit down. You're right. I'd have two chairs, and I'd do one like that. So you just sit there like that, and you could just film forever with it on your knee. Or, if I wanted to, I could just, I could. Get, I mean, you can just go down and up incredibly easily, um, and it just, everything just sits so perfectly. It's, it's, the, it's been. It's the first camera to be really ergonomically designed and to be handheld. Everything else before that was a compromise. And so that's why I just learned to love it. And uh, I resisted all attempts to get this camera off me right to the day I left the BBC <laughs> because I just loved it. It, was, it saw me through all over the world and all sorts of strange places. So I have a, a great affection for it. Yeah, what about the lens? The, which, which lens do you want the uh, well, Angino on? Well, I was saying earlier on that the I often used a 12 mil and yeah. a 25 mil right. on the turret, mm -hmm. and I would actually switch during filming like that. But what I like best about this camera is that you could. It sat so easily on the shoulder because all the weight is, is there. And if you were doing a walking track, the lovely thing is that you could... I've just switched it on. You can put the end of the magazine on your shoulder and that then becomes a pivoting point and your arms become the shock absorber. So when you're walking, you can actually keep it level. Whereas if the camera's sitting tight on your shoulder, which the, 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 most cameras are, every step you take makes it wobble. So it's a way of getting a, um, a pretty smooth walking track because you can do it that way and absorb all the shock with your, with your, with just with your, with, your, with your elbows. So when this came out, it was like a miracle, basically. Plus it was designed, as you can plainly see, this is not the most comfortable camera in the world to hold, basically, as a hand-holding device. I mean, it is, it is comfortable, but it's not at all well balanced. Whereas, ah, this one, of course, was completely different because you could, you could bring it back onto your shoulder, your shoulder yep. and work with it like this. More manageable. Yeah. So it was a better balance. And then when you moved, you could actually lift it off your shoulder so the body didn't transmit the vibrations into the camera. You could hardly be subtle with something like this, or this even. I mean, that was considered great in its day. But then when we got this, you suddenly felt a sense of freedom. You, could, you were very mobile. You know, you, for me anyway, I mean, I can't speak for other DPs, but, you know, I thought of my body as a kind of steady cam, even before steady cam came out on the market. It was being flexible, so it was going into the gym and building up this, you know, your upper body strength and your legs 
so that you're able to sort of just be as flexible as you can. But you know, if you go into a dangerous situation, you need to be alert as to what's going on around you. So it's learning to use your left eye as well as your right eye and being you know, ready to move as fast as you possibly can. Not as young as I was, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but it is, I mean, it is a great camera.